Hi, and welcome back to the final part of my presentation, which is development. So beginning with my prototype build procedure, this is a slideshow on how my prototype is exactly built and the tools needed in order to do so. In order to properly execute my prototype, you need polypropylene filament, a 3D printer, a phone charger cord, rubber tubing, top piece, bottom piece, and connector piece, which are all included in my CAD files. Moving forward with tools and equipment, my estimated build time for my prototype is eight hours and 15 minutes, which also includes 3D printing time. The tools required are box cutters, hot glue, hot glue gun, super glue, charging cable, closed door shoes, and cut resistant gloves, since we will be dealing with sharp objects. Going forward with procedure one, which is my CAD files, on an STL, we want to export these files and 3D print them. Next, for procedure two, we want to cut three inches of a rubber piece and cut a slit vertically. This is in order to ensure the user to apply the rubber tubing onto the charger as easily as possible. And that's what is shown on procedure three. Going on to procedure four, we want to slide the rubber piece up into the thickest part of the charger. And as you can see on the picture provided, the thickest part of the charger is where the connector meets the charging cord. Moving forward with build procedure four, which is to slide a rubber piece up onto the thickest part of the charger. And as you can see, alongside with the picture provided, the thickest part of the charger is where the thicker plastic meets the charging cord. Moving over to procedure five, we wanna take the bottom piece and cut two small slits stemming from the bottom hole going across west and east. This is because at first it is difficult to insert the charging cord without having difficulties putting in the thickest part inside the hole. Procedure six, now we wanna attach the rubber piece and charger into the bottom piece. So we're just gonna slide in the, charging, the charging cable as well as the rubber tubing inside the hole. Procedure seven, we wanna place a line of hot glue one inch down from the charger around the circumference of the rubber piece. So with the picture provided, you can see that all we're doing is attaching the rubber cord and rubber tubing onto the bottom piece in order to ensure that it doesn't move. And this is gonna be the base of our prototype. Procedure eight, while glue is still warm, we wanna slide the rubber piece and charging cable into the bottom opening of the, of the bottom piece. And once again, this is just ensuring that this is a secure base in order to provide that security, as well as make sure we have a standard base for the top piece to move around freely. Procedure nine, using a spare rubber tubing, cut a 0.5 centimeter ring. And this is because we're gonna glue this on top to our top piece next in order, once again, to ensure that the top piece moves freely. Procedure 10, we wanna attach this five centimeter ring, 0.5 centimeter ring, onto the connector piece with super glue. And as you can see on the picture, the rubber ring has a slit on it so we can properly put it around the connector piece and the top piece. Build procedure 11. Attach the bottom end of the connector piece to the main rubber tubing using hot glue until secured. Once again, this is just ensuring that it's nice and secure and there's no excess movement um, in order to provide the best prototype for the user. Procedure 12, using the 0.5 center ring, attach the top piece by sliding the ring around the connector attachment. Procedure 13, now connect the top piece and bottom piece together by aligning the two triangle indicators. So since I did prototype and build a little notch where the triangle is in order to secure both pieces together, it is important that when you first apply it, you make sure that those triangles are aligned in order to connect those two notches together. And moving forward with procedure 14, in order to lock the mechanism, all you have to do is shift the triangles to where they're no longer aligned. For inbuilt refinements, all I'm gonna do is have a connector piece slot, which will be added into the bottom piece. So in order to do this, I will once again, go into my CAD modeling and insert a little section where I will remove a piece of the bottom piece in order for the thickest part of the charger to uh, insert properly. And this is just to avoid using any sharp objects uh, during application. Special thanks to Cesar Mesa. He 3D printed all of my main components for my prototype. Next, we have prototype show and tell, where in this section, I will be showing a slideshow that will demonstrate each usage of the components of my prototype. Here we have a disconnected prototype, which demonstrates the top piece, connector piece, and bottom piece, alongside a description of where the triangle locks are indicated. 
Going forward, we have a disconnected side view of, with the charger. And this shows how the connector piece fully holds the bottom piece and top piece together, ensuring that neither pieces get lost. Here we have a disconnected top view. So from this top view, we can see that the connector piece is attached by the small ring that, we, that I have shown previously before. Um, next, we have the rubber piece that provides extra support to the charger. This will prevent fraying from the charger as well as overuse damage. Top view of locking mechanism. So here is the locking mechanism, which shows where the triangular indicators and the notches can be found. Um, it's a little difficult to see in the picture. We notice that the notches are there and they are able to fully secure and lock the prototype together. And there at the bottom is the connector piece, which is attached with the rubber, rubber ring as well. Here is a better view of the opening notch. Here's a fully assembled and connected prototype with locks aligned. This is how you would first connect the top piece and bottom piece together before locking it. Here's a bottom view of the device. And as you can see, there's the rubber tubing around the char charger cord, as well as some hot glue that we used previously before. Prototype analysis. Overall, I'm very pleased with how my device functions and locks. The bottom piece and the top piece connect flawlessly with the notches, but the only part that I did have some trouble with is the connector piece. As the connector piece rings that I first 3D, 3D modeled did not print properly, in which I had to figure out a way around it. And in doing so, I created the 0.5 centimeter rubber ring in order to fix this problem. Continuing with my prototype analysis, Another aspect of my prototype that I did have trouble with is the bottom piece not having a notch for the thickest part of the charger cord. Um, because of this, I was, not, I was not able to flawlessly insert the charger inside the, the prototype. And because of this, I would have to rework and cut those slits into the west and east end of the bottom piece. Next, we have a video of my prototype working. And this is how the device is used. So first we have a fully assembled prototype that is first aligned and now unaligned. And by aligning it once again, we are able to remove the top piece from the bottom piece to, to expose the live charging cable. Here I'm inserting the charging cable inside into a phone and it clearly shows that it is working. And there it is plugged into the phone each component is still attached to each other, which, which remains secured. And in order to secure the mechanism once again, you want to align the triangles, snap it back together, and disalign the triangles to secure the locking mechanism. Next, we have a list of tests. And these are the testing procedures that I will move forward with in order to ensure the safety and credibility of my prototype. First, we have the scale test, the weight test, heat test, application test, voltage test, water test, and, and small parts test fixture test. So here's the scale test. Basically what I had to do for the scale test is that in, I had to ensure that the prototype lay, weighs less than one pound. And here I have five pictures showing that the prototype did weigh less than one pound. And in fact, it weighs one ounce. Here is the scale results. So I had 10 trials and each trial, the prototype did consistently weigh 0 0.0625 pounds. Next is the weight test. Here I have a set of pictures uh, where the weight increases by five. So on the top left, I have five and going towards the right, I have 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 and 40. And each test shows the durability of the prototype material. Here are my final two pictures, which is a 45 pound weight and a 50 pound weight on top of the prototype material. So after testing each weight, um, my prototype did pass all of, the, all of the weight tests. And this just ensures that the prototype will be able to withstand and support 20 pounds just in case of any, of any mishaps. Next is the heat test. So in increments of 10 degrees, um, I began inserting the prototype material test into 
a conventional oven in order to test the durability against heat. So here are the results. Um, after 50 degrees, it was not damaged. And then again, 60 degrees, it was not damaged, but it was not until 70 degrees where it started, started melting. Um, unfortunately, this means that this test did not pass. Application test and results. So out of 10 participants, I presented my prototype to them and I allowed them to assemble the prototype completely. And on a scale from one to 10, I had them rate their satisfaction with the application process, as well as an application time in seconds. So the average of application time is 73.9 seconds and the average rating for the application is a nine, which means that my test did pass. Here we have the voltage test. So on these two pictures, it is the initial voltage of the live charging cable, which came out to 5.4 and 5.1. Voltage results. So once I put the protective casing of my prototype around the live, live charging cable, the results came out just like I would expect them to. After the first trial, there was no voltage. And all throughout the fifth trial, there was no voltage, which successfully prevents any electrical damage to the skin. Next is the water test. So here I present you um, the prototype material after one minute, which is the top left. Um, top middle is after two minutes and top right is after three minutes. And the two pictures on the bottom is after three minutes. And as you can see, the prototype was not damaged. There was no discoloration and it did stay intact throughout the water test. Water results. For this test, I did want my prototype material to be submerged underwater for three minutes with no signs of damage. And in fact, that did happen. Um, there was no damage and I was very pleased with this test as not only did it, did it survive being submerged for three minutes, but it survived being submerged for 10 minutes, which was way beyond expected. Next is a small part test fix your test. This small cylindrical plastic tube represents the throat of a child. And the way it is tested is that you insert an object that you may believe is a choking hazard. And if it fits, it is a choking hazard. And if it does not fit inside the tube, then it is not a choking hazard. Luckily for my test, my prototype did pass as it is not a choking hazard for children. Um, and in the pictures provided, here is a little montage of me inserting my prototype into the small parts test fixture for results. Since the prototype did not easily fit inside the tubing, we can now conclude that my prototype is a non-choking hazard. Next we have is conclusion. So what is the purpose of testing my prototype? This is to fully ensure the user and those who are using it, um, most likely a parent and the child, that they are safe and that my product is reliable and prevents any damage caused by cell phone chargers. What is the significance of test criteria? Well, we will never know if a prototype is successful or not without performance benchmarks. So testing criteria will determine how well the prototype performed. And this is only to strengthen the prototype and allow any, any tests to show the, where improvements are needed to be made. Is your test reliable? That is, can others repeat your test the same, with the same results? I believe my prototype is reliable and it can be rep replicated and assembled just, this, just the same as I did. I provided a detailed description of my prototype as well as the steps in order in order to produce the same results. I also provided the 3D modeling STL documents in order for the exact 3D printing model to be printed. It is important to remove bias as it can cause danger and unreliability to the device. With bias, it can, it can allow people to shift their opinions towards success or towards failure. And because of this, bias is a very dangerous aspect that needs to be removed. Why does the test procedures need to be repeatable? Well, in order to ensure the safety of the user, the test procedures must be repeatable in order to determine the accuracy and consistency of the performance of the prototype. This will allow the strengths to further show in a prototype as well as the weaknesses and in order how and in, and to figure out how to strengthen those weaknesses as well. This will also allow room for improvement. Here are a list of references. These references will also be provided inside my website. 
and thank you so much for watching.